como siempre con nosotros. Este, gracias, muy buenos días a todos y todas. Hoy tenemos un programazo porque hoy vamos a estar hablando con David de un, un reco reconocimiento por la excelente labor que se está realizando en el Yunque. Y para nosotros era importante que, que pues, se hablara de este tema. Así que vamos sin mucho preámbulo a que David nos hable de ese, de ese reconocimiento y, y nos diga eh, por qué fue que se, nos di, se le dio al Yunque y por qué se le dio este, a ese equipo de trabajo tan excelente que ellos tienen. Así que nada, Eduardo, pasemos con David. Pues sí, David, en confianza. También el dedo de los participantes. Si tienen preguntas, pueden escribirlas en el chat. Así que también vamos a estar manejando la, las preguntas para preguntarle a David. Así que, David, uh, the audience is all yours. So, you can start. All right. Well, good morning, everyone. Um, really, really excited to be sharing uh, with everyone um, the success that uh, we had over the last year. And, and such a challenging year it was with, with COVID and um, just... Uh, trying to make sure that we had uh, amazing opportunities for the public and enabling people to connect with El Junque. Um, before I start, um, I just want to make it clear, mi español es muy malo. So we are, we are going to lean on Eduardo and others to help make sure that um, there's tons of space and time here for questions or if we need to translate something. Or if you have a question, you need it translated. Um, We'll just slow down and make sure we get a time to, to have the conversation. And so I will be presenting in English. I apologize. I, I grew up in California and um, I can speak English really fast. So Eduardo has been instructed to slow me down if I get going too fast here. Um, but really, this is a, a time of uh, reflection and celebration for us. And so I just want to take the time with it. And I really appreciate the invitation from Petrina Saladaria to, to, to share this with you. So. First, a little bit about myself. My name is David Isles. I'm the public services staff officer here in El Junque. I've been here five years. Um, I got I moved to Puerto Rico right before um, about four to six months, uh, six months before Irma made landfall. And so my experience in El Junque has actually been very focused on recovery since the hurricane. And and um, it's now changing, right? And we now get to grow and move forward and um, and uh, start doing new things. And so it's been a really exciting time being here. Um, my family loves it. Um, I threw them in some pictures here just to know that, you know, for, for me, um, I live in Luquillo and, and this is my community too. Um, and so just really, really fun to, to spend some time with you all. So um, this year, uh, the myself, as well as a huge list of folks, including partners and Vitrina, were recognized by the regional office out of Atlanta, Georgia for the Forest Service um, in a special award for our public service. And um, really it was highlighting the success that we had together um, through the pandemic. And it was uh, you know, uh, for a, a whole list of things, but the reality is, is we did an exceptional job this last year of making the best situation being creative and exploring and doing things differently when um, the pandemic uh, hit us. So, um, you know, for me, when, when I, not that I've gotten many awards, but um, for me, the award itself was kind of a time to reflect. Um, you know, recognition is like making you look behind you and say, oh, wow, look at what happened last year. Um, and sorry, this graphic didn't come out as clean as I wanted it to, but the actual, the theme this year for the Regional Forester Awards was Together We Rise. And I thought that was really amazing, um, kind of fits, you know, really the year we had. Um, we came together and we rose above the challenges of the pandemic. And so, um, you know, I'll share, it was an interesting situation to be in as a, as a manager, right? Um, and, and really, you know, struggling on how does this, how do I make this work for my, my, my employees, our employees here in the Forest Service, for the public access, you know, how do we provide for safety with the pandemic? Um, and, you know, just some thoughts I was thinking of is, you know, we, we were still in recovery mode, and in some ways we still are. Um, we're still rebuilding sites, we're still opening things back up for Maria, but now we have a pandemic on top of it. And so it just kind of built on top of, of where we were already at. And we had to prioritize safety 
um, safety of the public, safety of our employees. Um, you know, our, our forest uh, workforce is a family and we needed to take care of our family and we needed to take care of those coming to, to El Portal, uh, or not El Portal, but El Junque. And so it, um, you know, it, it presented some challenges. Um, and we were forced with a hard decision. And, and I just want to share, you know, a lot of units across the country, parks and forests alike, they simply couldn't figure out, uh, couldn't, couldn't come up with a clean method to maintain safety um, during the pandemic. And a lot of them ended up closing access or allowing, um, I would call it like free for all access, just like swinging open the gates, but not taking care of the bathrooms, not putting to protect their employees, not putting their employees in that environment. And so you had one extreme to the other, either it was completely closed or it was chaos. And we looked at those models and just recognized that wouldn't work, especially in the Lamina recreation area where everything's condensed into a small section. There's, you know, developed sites, there's areas where people concentrate. And so um, we said, you know, it's important for us to maintain public access. Um, this is the hard decision. This is the hard way to do it, but let's do it because it is the right thing to do. Um, and then it made us get creative. We wanted to say, well, okay, here's the, uh, here's the situation we're in, what can we do? You know? And so, um, and then the huge thing that I came away from it is that we're not alone. Um, the Forest Service is, is a 110 year old organization and we're used to charging forward and taking command, um, but that's not how it works here in El Junque. We have a family. We have a, a force uh, plan and vision that's around co-management and working together with our communities and our partners. And that is a huge part of the success here is we were not alone. It wasn't just the Forest Service doing it. It was us plus Petrina, plus Amigos de El Junque, plus others, Corazón Latino, that, that enabled success. So, um, you know, from here, I just kind of wanted to highlight some of the key things that happened this last year and, and um, you know, kind of how it went. And so, you know, the first program I've got to share was super fun and exciting to us was the virtual ranger program. Um, we initiated this when we were all in lockdown and um, this team of bright and fun, energetic people just we kind of all looked at each other one day virtually <laughs> and said, you know, people can't come to the forest, right? This is when this started when we were in full lockdown and people can't, people can't connect with El Junque. That's not good, right? We want people to connect with El Junque. So how can we bring El Junque to them? And, um, and so we started the virtual ranger program. Um, I mail ordered some GoPros, uh, people were using their cell phones and we started a series of videos um, bringing a ranger into your living room into your pocket on your cell phone um, and let you connect with El Junque. Um, we produced over a hundred videos. Uh, they were prioritized to be in Espanol Primo and, and English Segundo, and English Second, because this was a unique opportunity for El Junque to push the agency, and this is kind of a reoccurring theme, into reaching out to our our whole community, not just part of our communities. And so we, we produced these videos and I, I hope some folks on the line here got to enjoy these. Uh, they're still posted on Facebook right now. If you go to the El Junque Facebook page, the official one with the shield, um, there'll be a videos tab. And if you go there, you can find these Ranger talks. And it was a great success. These ended up getting shared across the country. Uh, a couple went international. Um, and people could enjoy learning about general themes of, of conservation, um, as well as very specific themes, um, you know, about the endemic Puerto Rican boa, for example, or uh, the endemic woodpeckers of Puerto Rico. Um, and they could connect. So while we were all stuck at home, we were, you know, we were able to connect people with El Junque, but also connect them with what was in their backyard. Uh, for example, the middle video with Katie with her hands up, she shot that video from her backyard and, you know, talked about how we can reach out in our backyard. So this was, this program was really exciting for me because it, it made us think different, do something different. And, um, you know, we, we had something over, like over 20,000 views of these videos. Um, it, it was a really big success. And another part of that, um, just to kind of talk to the image on the right hand side, um, one of our rangers is very talented with a guitar and her singing voice is great. And so Aria, um, 
stepped into a, a, a role of actually just bringing um, you know, traditional folk tunes and singing and just singing while in uniform in the space and letting people connect with that. Um, we were supported in this effort from some of our partners too, who also made similar products. Um, you know, uh, Love in Motion worked on a, a wellness video. Uh, um, DMO did a music in El Junque video and, uh, and others. Um, but it was really a great way to connect people with El Junque when we, all of us, right, we're stuck, stuck in our houses. Um, and so that was a wonderful success and um, really exciting for me to have the Forest Service provide bilingual uh, products or just in Spanish products to, to the entire country. So, um, yeah. You know, the, the, one of the big things that we did end up implementing, and this was part of that really hard decision, is um, how do we maintain access to the developed recreation areas. And this, this is La Mina recreation area or the 191 corridor, you know, with Yakuhu Tower and uh, La Coca Falls, um, Quebrada Juan Diego, Palo Colorado, Baño Grande, um, that area. Um, how do we do that safely? You know, how do we do that while respecting uh, the Puerto Rico executive orders? And if, for, for those to recall, sometimes those orders changed every couple of weeks. Um, and how do we do that respectfully of the executive orders, but mainly providing a safe access for both the public, but also our employees. Um, and so um, this, this was a lot of work for us um, and it came out uh, with a good product. You know, it wasn't easy though. So we had to change our cleaning contracts to meet COVID recommendations from um, the, um, you know, that were coming out relative to COVID and cleaning. Um, we had to determine what that capacity was, you know, how many people could come up to that area and it still be safe to use the bathrooms. And we had to constantly change and learn, right? And, and we've learned more about COVID as it progressed. In the beginning, everyone was very worried about bathrooms and cleaning surfaces, right? But now we know it's more spread by aerosol. So um, we, um, you know, we've constantly have adapted that. Um, we wanted a way that um, the public would know they would have access. They would be able to come from wherever community they, they're in on the island, uh, say if they were coming from Cabo Rojo and know they would get here without potentially getting turned away because of that capacity limitation. Um, you know, it, it was a success, it wasn't easy. Um, and one thing I'll share with this that was exciting for me is once again, it provided us an opportunity um, as Bosque Nacional El Junque to provide some leadership on to the Forest Service as a whole. So, um, and, and that really came through the recreation.gov interface. And recreation.gov is the website that um, all the parks and forests in the entire country utilize for reservations of campsites, uh, trailheads, cabins, you know, uh, visitor centers, everything. Um, it is the one website that, that um, services all uh, national parks and forests. And, we went into that interface and said, okay, we need a reservation system for this just to make it work. Um, but how can we make it cost as little as possible? And this, is, and then we realized this isn't gonna work because the entire website is in English. <laughs> and so um, it provided us and El Junque an opportunity to be like, well, wait a minute, right? Um, visitors come to Yosemite National Park from all over the world. Why does this website only work in one language? And so we've actually pushed them and they'll be making changes over the next few years to make um, the interface of recreation.gov a better interface uh, at a multilingual, so multiple language interface. Um, but our push was to make it bilingual. And once again, we did, you know, uh, Espanol Primo, uh, English Segundo. Um, and, and that was a big change for them. Um, I mean, in the, and I'll share, this was Jeff Ellison, myself, others, calling the national office and being, we have to fix this, right? We have to do better. Um, it doesn't work for my community. And it also doesn't work for communities across the country, right? You, you have to be able to work in multiple languages. So um, that was a, you know, it was a challenge. Um, we made them change the format of their website, you know, all kinds of things, but, um, but rewarding. And I think something that'll be paying, you know, good dividends into the future too. Um, the reservation system is not perfect. Um, it has its challenges and we're learning with it. Um, 
And, and just to share with everyone, you know, as we came into fall season this year, we still have a limited capacity and, and we've always had a limited capacity in Lamina Recreation Area. Um, mm -hmm. But, um, you know, it, we hit slow season, which for us is pretty short. Um, but we hit a slow period and it's like, well, maybe we don't need to have reservations right now. So we actually did turn off reservations. They're off right now from Monday to Friday. And you only need reservations on the weekend because that's when it's busy again. And we need to, to, to manage the number of visitors still in these developed areas um, for, for safety and such. So, so the reservation system, once again, this was kind of the, the hard push for us. The virtual rangers was fun. This one was tricky. This one wasn't easy, um, but it, it worked um, and it met the needs. And we found some, some other benefits of it that we weren't expecting. Um, we've gotten some feedback, um, both positive and negative, um, and to, to be honest and open about it. Um, but one thing we didn't realize is um, there's a better customer service interface in some ways with the reservation site. Um, 191, when it would get busy, say in July, this happened most days of July as an example, mm -hmm. the forest would get so full, we would have to close the gate for safety. Um, usually by about 1130 uh, midday, say noon, we would have to close the gate because it would be too full and everyone else would get turned away. And it didn't matter if you came from Palmer, Cabo Rojo, Spain, <laughs> Israel, you know, like people were getting turned around and it took a lot of work from um, our staff. It was really sad, you know, like we don't want to turn people away from El Junque. <laughs> um, it was really hard, but we found with the reservation system, people would know if they would have access. So if you book a you know, I'm going to be there next Saturday and you're coming from Cabo Rojo, you drive all that way, you know, you get to go in, right? Like it, there, it's, it's booked. Um, and so we found we had to, you know, we're turning away a lot less people and having that negative experience. Um, and, and yet people could know for, a, you know, knew, know for sure that they would be able to come into the forest with the reservation. Um, you know, to be clear, we only implemented this where we had developed sites. Um, the rest of the forest is still open access, first come, first serve. Um, it was only in the, the 191 corridor due to the concentration of people and buildings and, and um, sites like those. So, and I don't see any questions in the chat box yet, so I'll... Uh... Yeah, you can continue. Well, I had a question because, sure. uh, because I... Uh, a little bit of vitrina when you when you when you started the virtual uh, the the Guadalajara the forest the virtual uh, forest ranger mm -hmm. because right now what we're doing with this webinar if, if one if one of the efforts that vitrina did to connect with people during the pandemic so yeah. I saw that you guys were also were doing this virtual forest ranger thing so you can. And I know maybe how for how it was for you guys because for between it's very important to connect with people. So obviously we do the webinars, uh, but we like Hector always says like the el calor humano, so the, the human, the warmth. So for you guys, I, I know that's it's very difficult not to be able to interact directly with people and to educate them. So how was that for you guys? You know, um, I me. Mean, uh, Edward, uh, that's a good question. You know, it was really hard. So I'm going to see, make sure if I back up here to our, these slides, some of these faces are familiar yeah. to people on the phone, I'm guessing, or, or on the video yeah. line. Um, mm -hmm. when you're a park ranger, your job, your whole career is about connecting with people and connecting people to their resources, right? Like, um, the heart of it, the feeling, the smells, the sounds of the forest. And, and, and it was really hard for our staff for one to be at home, yeah. right? But they yeah. also, you know, that there's a lot of meaning to having um, a job where you help connect people. And so it it was big for this team to be able to do this. And you can see, uh, I, and this is me and I, I am their supervisor. And so I have glowing pride, but <laughs> you can see the energy and passion in every one of these vine videos that really is very heartfelt, whether it's from Irene, Katie, Victor, Adia. Um, and so, man, it was a big thing. You know, we were all at home. We couldn't work and go to the field. We were all in lockdown just like everyone else initially. And this enabled us to, to, to bring purpose to kind of being stuck at home and connecting people to El Junque. And so, yeah, no, it was, um, it was exciting. And I don't, um, you, I, I mentioned you guys again, Eduardo, I promise, because part of this virtual ranger is we started engaging more with, with 
with you too and Vitrina in, in providing um, more in-depth sessions that are back and forth like this one um, about wilderness, wild and scenic rivers and, and connecting people to El Junque, you know, on an even deeper level. Mm -hmm. These were really meant to be, you know, a two minute video about Puerto Rican boas or two minute about, you know, what are the birds in, my, in your backyard, you know, kind of connections. Um, but, but you are right. It was a, it was an exciting time. Um, this is new for the Forest Service. I mean, there's a couple units in the agency that do things like this, but it's like one here, one there, or one a month. And we just flooded out as many as we have. Um, and I will share, we actually have a whole bunch we haven't shared yet. Um, uh, we have a whole series on Leave No Trace um, that we're going to be moving forward, uh, both in Spanish and English, um, camping, you know, and, uh, you know, exciting things like that, um, that we produced during this time. So, yeah. So, so for this, so this for you guys, like open the door to do more things like this in the future, because now making these videos for Facebook, maybe in the future, you're, you're going to be doing more like Facebook lives from El Portal, so there's going to be new something, so things like that. So, so this, this it is actually like an opportunity because for Rutina also doing these webinars, because we started doing the webinars out of necessity. Of the pandemic but now we saw a huge opportunity to reach more people and bring more people around the world so i think for you guys it's, it's doing this also exactly exactly um it it definitely was that um we do plan on continuing some virtual ranger programs um probably not as concentrated right when you have like six people at home with nothing else to do they make a lot of videos yeah. um but we do plan yeah. on on moving forward yeah. uh, the virtual ranger um programs into the future. And I'm really excited about it. Um, El Portal is one spot that we hope to do some of those um, as well. But also, you know, the further out spots, I don't know, there were some video clips we also produced where, you know, the wildlife biologist was in a tree doing Puerto Rican parrot surveys and just takes a few seconds, you know, take a 30 second video saying, hey, my name's Jessica, I'm up here studying parrots and, you know, from the tree, what, you know, 100 yeah. feet in the air. Um, we re recognize that that brings value and it connects people to to the forest. Uh, mm -hmm. So, yeah, yeah, awesome. So you can continue where you left sure. off because that was like a <laughs> I interrupted you, but no, 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 it's great. It's a good discussion. Yeah. I appreciate it. Um, so one thing I, I want to share. This is a short one, and I don't even have pictures on this one. Um, one thing we did do this year that um, during the the pandemic. Um, that was highlighted in that ward, and it's kind of underspoken, but it, it was an effort, is um, during the pandemic, uh, the, there was a huge impact to businesses. And this included our permit, permitted businesses or the businesses based out of El Junque. And that's outfitter and guides, concessionaire permits, and those kind of components. Um, as resources were coming out relative to COVID, right? There was small business administration loans, um, uh, grants, applications, those kinds of things for, for support of businesses. Um, one thing we did do, um, El Junque, that's not, not in our normal job description, is we recognized that almost all of those products coming out come from the federal government only in English and those applications and such. Um, and so we worked with the business community that's connected with El Junque through permits and such to one, get them those resources, but also assist them in their application process with any translation support, um, updates, um, just to make sure that they were connected to those opportunities and, and they were utilized by our business community. So this was kind of a, a quiet success, but it, it really meant a lot to, to those, those businesses. And it's something, um, this was mainly one specific employee on the, the El Junque team, Mirna, and her effort as the special uses administrator, she took it upon herself to do this because she wanted to make sure that um, the the, comp the businesses, in most of them family owned, that are associated with Del Junque could could um, do their best through the pandemic, right? Um, and so, just to share a little a little thing that happened that most people didn't know about was once again part of this award recognition. Uh, yeah, and, and we and we thank you for that because also we between uh, we work with entrepreneurs. We want them to, we want them that the, the opportunities that they are available make are more accessible to them. And making these uh, these permits uh, bilingual and this kind of stuff is where it's very we appreciate that a lot. So I just wanted to say that to to, yeah. to express that. Well, you know, we 
Um, uh, I'll echo one, one common thing that Mirna says is, you know, El Junque is about partnerships and businesses yeah. are partners just as much as any nonprofit um, or volunteer group, which is who I'm going to talk about next. Um, they're all partners and, and we're all community. And so um, we were happy to do this um, and, and um, you know, and it worked well too with, with, with your group as well, um, Eduardo and Vitrina. So. You know, so another success through the pandemic that um, just to share, we you know we had to adjust and adapt to is with volunteers and um, volunteers for the for us here in El Junque have changed on kind of how how we do it and move it forward. And and um, I'm hoping I'm not introducing this to people, but um, a lot of our volunteer projects really center around trails. Um, trail work is a wonderful um experience. It's a great way to connect with the forest. It's very rewarding. It's one of the few jobs um, that I've ever gotten to do where you work all day and then you can turn around and see all your progress right behind you. Um, trails volunteers um, moved towards, um, towards us leading it would be traditional. The Forest Service leads a group of volunteers to a partner and that uh, partner is facilitated by Love in Motion, one of our partners, and uh, they're developing a, the El Junque, they, El Junque Trails Volunteer Program, um, may have seen them on Facebook, and they did an amazing work. So throughout the pandemic, we were still able to manage small groups of volunteers, get people can, you know, out into the forest, um, getting them, you know, out of their living room and getting into the space and enjoying it, but also connecting with their trails, because as public lands, those trails belong to the public. And so, um, it was a really successful program. Um, here's just the stats from last year. So it doesn't even include the entire pandemic, but we had 8,700 hours, over 700 people. And economically, you know, they, they put a number to this, you know, it's a, a quarter of a million dollars worth of time and energy that was invested into volunteers at, at, at um, El Junque. And so really proud of this effort and can't wait to see it grow. Uh, once again, this is on Facebook. So if you go to El Junque Trails Volunteer Program on Facebook, um, they're regularly posting, um, you know, opportunities. Um, some of them are really exciting. They, for the expert uh, level volunteers, they're starting to offer overnight experiences where you you hike out, you work all day, and you spend the night out in the middle of El Toro, and then you keep working, and then you kind of close out. And it's um, it's a really neat way to uh, experience El Junque, um, and. Uh, just great to see this program grow for the year. And this and trails is not the only place we have volunteers, but it's it's a big, big part. Um, we also have volunteer efforts in uh, Rio Sabana at the recreation site there, um, Quebrada Grande and the recreation site um, off, off the 186 corridor and many other areas as well, so. Yeah, I just wanted to say that uh, Austin Betrina had the uh, trade winds I think it was August uh, from last year. So we were able to see all the, the all the, the work that the volunteers have done uh, to the Trade Winds Trail. And it was amazing. Uh, I was like very, I was amazed uh, about how how much, so because I think it was uh, Luis that was showing us because after uh, all, because of, uh, because after the, the hurricane, there were still like trails that were like all messed up and you had to clean it up. So it was very like, uh, Eye opening, eye opening. How how much work had to be done, and how all these volunteers, all all the work they were doing. So for me, it was a very amazing experience, like to able to see that. So I can see, like I can see firsthand that I've seen what the volunteers were doing. So it's a very amazing work, and we really, really appreciate it. Yeah, it the work's amazing. I a couple weekends ago, I took my son and his Cub Scout uh, group hiking in, in trade winds and that would not have been possible 10 years ago, even 15 years ago, um, except for the effort of these volunteers. And so uh, to share with everyone on the line, um, it's, I think we're around 90, 95% of all trails are open in, in El Junque. Um, all three trails in El Toro Wilderness are open. And, and that hasn't happened for a very long time. Um, when I first came on the forest, actually all three trails were closed. Um, and so it's been a huge success. Um, and uh, really excited to see where it goes in the future. Um, people can hike now. There's lots of hiking opportunities. So it, it's really exciting. Um, yeah. So, you know, I kind of 
one thing I wanted to touch on, and, and I ended up lumping a bit, um, you know, part of our award recognition is, um, was recognition for each one of uh, our partner organizations uh, that some of which we've already mentioned. And I just kind of want to touch on that. Um, but, you know, taking a step back, um, looking at the success of the year, I really realized that um, our forest plan vision of, of engaging in co-management co together um, with El Junque really, without defining it that way, really met the needs of the public together through the pandemic. Um, you know, all these things we've been sharing, sure the Forest Service contributed or led even, but really we couldn't have done it without partners and without our communities. And so um, I have some highlights here, um, but what I realized, maybe I'll go back here, is, you know, as I was writing this, I was like, wow, we're, we, you know, co-management is not, is meeting needs together, right? It, it is very much about doing it together. Um, and I realized now we have success together. And so to highlight some of the successes of the year, um, you know, uh, we worked with American Conservation Experience, which is a, a partner that's stateside based, but they enabled us to hire a, a number of interns to facilitate this work. Um, Vets Work is a national program that focuses on bringing skills and, um, and uh, job, like federal job eligibility to veterans. Um, this last year, we were able to hire the first Vets Work position ever in Puerto Rico. And that was really exciting because there's an amazing veteran community here. And we really wanted to start tapping into the, the veteran community and, and working with them to you know, start showing one career path, but also just you know, bringing them to, to El Junque. And so we do have a vet, Vets Work position right now. It's a, it's a great position. It's a year long. Uh, they gain a lot of skills in recreation management, learn how to work on trails. Uh, and then they have to lead a project. They have to be a leader. And the person in our vets work position is working on restoring all of the campsites uh, in El Junque and doing that with volunteers and with other veteran organizations. So really exciting work there. Vets work is a great partner that helped enable that. Um, Love in Motion um, is our uh, nonprofit partner that really focuses on wellness and volunteerism. And so uh, during the pandemic, they created wellness content, um, you know, getting people connected with El Junque through wellness, uh, like yoga, I think it was mainly yoga focused. Um, but they also, because of their volunteerism uh, expertise, they've really been supporting the Puerto Rico Trail Association uh, formation. So this vision of getting um, trail volunteers to be not just an El Junque focused uh, organization, but to be a, a resource for the island. They're helping developing that right now. And that's that El Junque Volunteer Trails Program. Um, so that's growing and their Love in Motion is growing that organization uh, with us, which is really exciting to see. Um, Fundacion Amigos de El Junque, uh, of course, as our friends group, uh, continues to support us with volunteer activities and events. Um, you know, we were able to facilitate successful work on uh, Quebrada Grande off of 186, El Toro Trail. Um, and, you know, throughout the pandemic, we still, we still have this great success and engagement um, there. And um, Corazon Latino is another organization we work with. Um, and uh, they actually double worked with another group called Mission, uh, Mission Continues. I think I mistyped Mission First. Mission Continues, which is a veterans-based organization. Um, across the nation with a really strong group here in Puerto Rico. And um, they worked on constructing the first forest therapy trail um, in, in the forest service. Um, and it's in Rio Sabana on the south side of the forest near Naguabo. Um, and it was really neat to see how they pulled together volunteers in the veteran community with this therapy and wellness community and the connections that were made there and you know, providing for future opportunities for um, you know, the forest therapy and, and on the south side of the forest there. And then um, of course, I'm gonna mention uh, uh, last but not least, uh, Vitrina Solidaria um, you know, hosted many presentations and partnered with us on, uh, like we mentioned before, El Toro Wilderness Education, Wild and Scenic Rivers, History of El Junque, uh, I'm sure that one's saved out there. Raymond always gives a great presentation um, and, and many more. And so I think, you know, these are just some key ones that were recognized in that award recognition. But um, 
there are many other partners as well, both formal and informal that are part of this discussion, but really, really exciting um, and, and really rewarding for me just to share with everyone that um, it wasn't forest service focused. It wasn't forest service even led. A lot of this was, um, I'll give Petrina some credit here. It was like, hey, you know, what do you guys want to talk about with the communities? Like, hey, could we do a video about whatever, you know? Oh, yeah. Uh, like, so I didn't say I wanted to talk to you all about this award and recognition. It was Vitrina saying, hey, David, could you share? You know, um, to me, that's amazing. That's leadership coming from our community, our co-management network um, in, in connecting people. Um, and so um, just kind of an exciting thing for me, just when I take a step back and look at, you know, you know, really the leadership of El Junque is not the Forest Service, it's a collective group. And so um, really exciting to, to look back, as I said, and, and recognize um, what happened this last year. Um, so what I kind of wanted to, to kind of close out on here is thinking about, um, and then we'll definitely have time for questions, you know, is how do we apply that success of, of overcoming a challenging time uh, pandemic, I, I hope we don't have any challenges more challenging than that one. <laughs> um, yeah. You know, a pandemic on top of hurricane recovery for me, um, I, I don't need any more challenges than that. But, um, you know, how do we apply that success <laughs> forward and then together? And um, I, I kind of just wanted to share with you all some things I've been thinking about relative to this success forward um, and together. And, and these are projects that are, some are in motion now. And, and I'm happy to share about those, but some of them are potential things out there. Um, and so one I've got to share is El Portal uh, de El Junque, the visitor center um, is opening soon. And um, we are working on, on how we operate and how do we move that space forward. And it is together um, to share with everyone on the line, we formed what we're, uh, is called uh, right, Eduardo, you guys named it the round table and it's the core partners that, yeah. that operate El Portal and the different components of that facility. Um, and it consists of uh, Foundacion Amigos del Junque, Petrina Saladaria, uh, Eastern National, who uh, maybe some people don't know is our conservation uh, education partner that does retail, but then also supports conservation education and the Forest Service. So Forest Service is one of four, <laughs> um, and that team will be ma will be managing and uh, El Portal Monday through Sunday, seven days a week, events, activities, education, um, office spaces, and um, and so much more. Right? There's there's nothing but opportunities with that facility. Um, so it's really exciting to see. That's another forward together type of opportunity there. Um, and, uh, trying to think anything else to say on that. Don't get me started on El Portal. That's a whole nother presentation, but, um, <laughs> um, it, it's a different way of doing yeah. it. And, and that's, what's super exciting about it, um, uh, to me is, is it's, uh, it's taking something that would have been traditionally a forest service operated facility and making it more, making it mass, um, by, by coming together on it. Um, you know, future ones I see the Lamina Recreation Area. We're starting to change how how do how do we make Lamina Recreation Area work? Uh, that site was designed in the 1940s and it has had traffic problems starting in 1943. So it was done in 42, traffic problems in 43. Um, it's always had issues. It's always had challenges. Maybe we should call them challenges. And so this is an opportunity that I see that we can come together and look at. How do we make that area sustainable and enjoyable and accessible, but together, you know, between the community, our partners, the businesses, and the Forest Service? Um, I think conserva um, conservation education is an example of that, of well, that's one thing that is, is important to El Junque and the Lamina Recreation Area is how do we provide conservation education? We can work with partners to do that, and, and we can work together on that. Um, you know, camping and trails, this is the part where I'm just making, making things up and thinking of the future. I think there's great opportunities and overnight experiences in El Junque and adjacent to El Junque, right? Like it doesn't all have to be on El Junque, but um, for camping and hiking that we can do together. Um, and maybe 
Maybe a partner next to the forest needs technical expert on how to build a trail. Well, that's something the Forest Service is good at, but maybe it's a business that's been supported by Petrina, but then is facilitating, right? That, and so it's, it's how do we build off this model to be successful moving forward? And, and there's many more. I think there's lots of um, opportunities and ideas, uh, lots of visions um, of, of what we can be when we come together. Um, just for me, I, I just had, I couldn't move forward with this award recognition without recognizing that um, we did this success together. We, we made it through the pandemic and provided great public access and opportunities, but we did it together. It was a, it was a group effort. Um, and so with that, this is the poster from the award. Um, I, I just uh, wanted to say from- yeah. mm -hmm. Go no, ahead, no, Continue. Oh, okay. Oh. I was just going to end here no, and then do questions. Finish and is, um, you know, like I said in the beginning, it was kind of ironic to me that after the word recognition, I looked at this poster and realized the theme is Together We Rise. That is what we did. And so I, I just really have to say a huge thank you to the partners, um, the Forest Service staff. I, I really have to thank them. Um, there was huge energy and effort put in, not just by the virtual rangers, but all the operations staff, you know, the people who have to run the weed whacker and get the bathrooms clean, um, run the gate checkpoint and, and manage reservations coming and going on the forest. Um, huge amount of work um, and a huge amount of work from our partners and communities too. So um, I just wanna say thank you to everyone um, that was part of it. Uh, the, the award recognition list was almost 50 people or groups long. It was 50, 50 individual um, line items of, of recognition. And it, and it ranged from interns to Forest Service staff to partners, uh, to individuals within some partner organizations too. So um, thank you. Uh, so yeah, questions. Uh, well, I, I just want to, I want to, that I'm, I'm like very proud because uh, for the partners that we have, because you, you can see when we, when we work with um, Junque, International, uh, Para Naturaleza, and others, uh, Corazon Latino, Love Emotion, so all these organizations and with the, you know, the Forest Service, you can see the passion and the compromise that they have with the Junque, with the forest. And, it's, it, and there is those things that you can feel that you, you almost like, you don't feel like everywhere that so you, you, you can talk with these people and you feel like they really love the forest and, and they really want to develop it and, and, and help the community. And I think that's why, I think that's why we, we, we were able to have all the success that you were talking about because, because they, these organizations organization actually like, you, you really feel that they care about it. And, 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 and I really feel really honored to be part of this. That I, that I can get to work with other organizations that really have this uh, sense of responsibility and care about our our, our forest and uh, and I think that's why we were able to do all of this and uh, and and now that and and now that I'm also well I'm part of, of those uh, David said before that we had the, these roundtable meetings about the portal that I'm being part of and see all how all this coming together and see how El Portal is looking. I don't want to spoil it, so I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't want to say much about it because I want you guys to visit it and see it with your own eyes because it's gonna be amazing and see all the exhibitions and all the new stuff that's gonna be, that's gonna be there. But you can really feel like the passion and the energy that, people, that all these agents are, are working on this are really putting. And that makes me, personally makes me really happy to be part of it and honored to be part of it. So I just wanted to express that like me about how how I feel about it about all these stuff, things that are happening here at El Junque. and uh, I don't know I don't know if you want to say something I don't know because I think David that you're also with me that you want to spoil anything <laughs> well I yeah I'm not allowed to spoil anything about yet. for tall all these projects that are coming so okay look forward to so uh, but yeah, but I just I just want to tell you guys to look forward to it when they when when they service announces the the date that's going to open. Like look forward to it that you guys are going to enjoy it. I'm really enjoying it, uh, and, and 
because of what I'm seeing. So I want you to go. And we have a couple of minutes left. If you have, if anyone in here has any questions, feel free to ask. Um, but yeah, um, and and also before anybody like ask a question, I wanted to like, it's, it's really funny because while, while David was uh, presenting all this information, you, we, I, well, from, from myself, I, I could see all the struggles that they were having, like connecting with people that also do, said those, those questions, between I had those questions and how, because for us, for us both, like connecting with people is very important. And, uh, and that makes me, maybe had that a sense even of more empathy because I said, oh, these guys are also, oh, I, I seen it because of their work, but now David that we're talking about it and how those things were very important to them. So it's, it makes me see that even more clearly. And uh, and yeah, so so I think that's something that we also share. I think not, not only with, with Ajunk, with the National Forest Service, but with other, the other organizations that that sense of community that we want to connect with people because I think that's the base the basis of all is connecting. I think if we can connect with people, we can be successful. I think that's that's the first thing that we need to know, and that's and and, and when and we are between entrepreneurs like develop their businesses, we don't we don't treat them like a business machine. We think that those are people. They have feelings. What are their motivations? What are their passions? What are their dreams? So we have to connect with them first. And I think that's also an effort that El Junque is tr trying to do with their audience that visits El Junque. So that's really cool. I don't know if you have anything to 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 say about that, David. Uh, no, I I, I want to make sure there's time for questions, Eduardo, uh, before we you know we close out. But no, I agree completely. Um, it we we are just about you know the forest is very important in of itself as a resource, but connecting people to it. Granted, that's what I do. <laughs> um, that, yeah. That's important to us too, so. But any questions or, uh, you know, follow-ups or anything anyone would like to share on the line? Well, I don't see any questions right now. I see, if there's no, if, if they're not going to, it means that you did an excellent. People had all the all the questions answered, and uh, so David, I wanted to thank you uh, for giving us an hour of your time talking about this. We have Petrina, like you said, we we were the ones that came to you. Ah, can we talk about? This? I think it's really important to communicate communicate this uh, these achievements that we're all having together. I think it's very people. It's really important to people be aware of what's happening, and we're really proud of every one of us or every organization that's working for this success. And uh, and yeah, I just want to thank you for your time. Uh, we want also to remind people that this presentation is going to be also on YouTube and it's going to be also on our Facebook. So you can share it with family and friends that want to know about all these things that are happening out in Junque and look forward for the grand opening of Airport It's going to be very, very soon. And I don't know, David, any uh, last words, closing words that you want to say to our public? Well, I, I can share the grand opening of El Portal is January 20th. Uh, that'll be the ceremony. And then uh, then the facility will be fully open yes. to the public. Um, that date I'm allowed to share. Um, the um, No, I think I just want to close out that um, I, I would encourage people to, to engage in the forest and be part of that together that I mentioned, be part of the, you, you know, there's, a, a, as I presented, there's a lot of different ways to be part of it, but, um, you know, our, our movement forward is doing this together and, and yes. in co-management. And, and so, and there's, there's a lot of different ways that, 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 the, what that looks like or what that, um, uh, is going to shape up to be. And, um, I feel honored to, that I get to help facilitate that. That's all I get to do. And it's a really, it's a big honor for me to help enable or facilitate whatever word you want to use. Um, because the passion really lies more with, with you all and the public than it, than it does with me. I get excited. And trust me. Um, I care, but um, I just want to say thank you, I think is how I would close out Eduardo and all, um, you know, thank you to Petrina for one asking me to come on. Um, but also just thanks to all of our organizations that helped Thanks again to all the hardworking crews, the staff, uh, Gabriel Gutierrez and his crew. Um, amazing work, um, amazing work this year. So um, 
uh, that's, I'll leave it with there. And I look forward to seeing everyone in, engaged and being part of the solutions moving forward and, and uh, El Junque moving forward. Yeah, so thank you so much, David. Thank you for being us with us here we all do, for all your work. And we'll see you guys on the web, on our next webinar. So be uh, ten pendientes de nuestras redes sociales. So un abrazo por todas y nos vemos prontito. Muchas gracias.